Hey, good morning. Welcome to Keto Mom Community. My name is Steve Milky. This is my lovely wife, Stephanie. Good morning. AKA Keto Mom. And today we're bringing to you chapter 17 of The Pursuit by Dexter Yeager. All right. This is a good one because persistency is all about keeping on. <laughs> this, is the, this is the book that we've been going through. We're going through this. All There's 31 chapters, and so we are on chapter 17. We've been going through a book for a year, so going through books for a year to help That's you on your impressive. mindset. I think it is. It is important. It's. I think it's the number one thing that people need to do is focus on their mindset, reading or podcasts, learning, and then putting it into action in order to get the results that you want. So, so psychology is everything. Yes. Chapter 17. If you are following along, if you don't have the book, you can go to ketomomsecrets.com and watch all the other past videos about the book. Which is something you may have to actually do because it's quite difficult to find this book. Yeah. And the good news is just go to the book club section at Keto Mom Secrets and it's all there. Every chapter that we've done up to this point. So today we're talking about persistency. He says, do you want to be successful? Are you willing to believe it without results? He says, C. That's what separates the winners from the losers. The winners believe that even when there are not results, they keep plugging away. Dun, dun, dun. Persistency, consistency, no matter what. No and so let's just take, what. for example, here right now, those who want fat loss. <clears throat> uh, how often have you given up after two weeks? How often, how often have you given up? Because it's not working. When in reality, I sometimes have to tell people, I have this conversation often. They'll say, I've done that, I've tried it, I've tried everything, it's been two weeks, it's been three months, I'm, it's not working. And, I'm, and I say this, what are you going to go do? Right. Are you going to go back to the way that you were eating before? Because if you do that, where are you going to get in the next two weeks, three months, six months? Yeah, you tell Doesn't me. even make sense, Doesn't right? Doesn't make sense. So logically... If you have chosen better in your life, like if you're moving your body, you've got a gym membership and you're actually going, not just thinking about it. Like if you're drinking more water, if you cut out sugar, like if you're making better choices and you're not seeing results, logically it would make sense that eventually you're going to get results, just not in the time frame that you might want it, but persistency will get you there. That's right? really good. Uh, man, I just took an essential oil drop and I put it on my tongue. And my whole nose is just dripping. It's windy out today, but it's going to be 100 <laughs> degrees, I think. So where are you tuning in from? Good morning. Yes, that's what I was curious. If you're new, we'd love to know if you're brand new. Comment new down below so we yeah. can reach out and connect with you, find out what your goals are. You had said something, Do you, where, you, where you work out, where the gym. I was thinking, yep. I was curious because we always just like to know a little bit more about you all. Do you work out at home? Oh, or that's do a good you question. go to the gym? So you can either you do type, your own thing? type in the gym you go to or just comment home gym because I'd love to know. Yeah. Hey, Jessica, welcome. I'm glad you're brand new. Glad that you're here. Um, welcome, welcome. This is a really good chapter because keep on keeping on is right. so important because persistency is one of the keys. It's like persistency, consistency. And I mean, just because you've had a bad day or you've had maybe a couple bad days doesn't mean that you're going to have a bad future. Right. And that's what I love is as long as you stay focused and you have your dream, you have your calling, you have your kazone, what we talked about in the last book. If you've got that idea of what you're going after, then it's OK to have some setbacks because right. sometimes the setbacks are what's actually a setup to propel you to jump into the future full force. Because think about this, like every time you make a mistake, you should be learning from it. Or if you have a failure, it doesn't mean you are a failure. It's just a temporary setback. So in those moments, it's like, what did I learn? And that's usually where you learn too. Let's be honest. Yeah. Like you don't always learn from all the great things. You learn from the bad habits. You learn from the bad mistakes. You learn from some of those failures. But you learn, you tweak, you adjust, and you keep moving forward. That's okay. The key. So last night when we were going to bed, uh, uh -oh. usually like uh -oh. if he can't fall I never asleep, know what she's gonna I know say. If you, oh, I feel like I have a dry skin on my nose. Would you like usually uh, essential oil drop <laughs> because it'll just open up everything. If he can't fall asleep, he'll either play quietly. He'll play our Bible, like on his, on our Bible app, or he'll play a podcast and he'll fall asleep. And all I remember is you played something and I, I put it in my mind cause I heard it and then I fell asleep. And all I heard was, I don't even know what you were listening, mm. but whoever was talking mm. in this podcast said, you need to oh, learn, yes. you need to do, and you need to be. And I told myself, I have oh, to remember yes. this was, because he said, 
Yeah, go for it. I know exactly what you're He saying. said, listen, we learned things, then we have to do them, put into action. And then, he, and then he says, you become it. And he gave an example. We have, uh, we took our daughter out driving yesterday, just no in a parking way. lot. I was going to say the same thing. So she is going through driver's ed. We took her out driving. It was super fun. But he said, he goes, think of somebody who's a brand new driver. And I think that's what caught my ear before I fell to sleep. Yep. He said, you learn how to drive. Yeah. And then you do the, right? She's going through driver's ed. We took her to a parking lot last night, let her drive for a little bit. So she did it. And then you become a driver, right? Like you become it. And so he just talked about that. And I thought, how many people, this is great for fitness. I said, if you want to be strong or let's just say you want to be healthy, you want to be a healthier version of you, you learn how to do it. You do the action and you become that healthy person. But you've got to learn. You're doing that here or maybe with other people. We've got four dogs. Please ignore them. You do and take the action persistently no matter how long it takes. We're going to talk about that. And the, hey, That's and then right. you become. Dogs, calm down. So what did you want to say? Ranger. And then you become. Yeah. So the one part that I really liked about that is because last night we had one of those experiences where uh, it wasn't right away. I, th I was actually expecting it to happen right away. And what I mean by that is when you just start learning how to drive, you're like figuring out how to hit the gas pedal or the brake. Gas, no brakes. Right. Except he's more like gas, no brakes. <laughs> but um, so in my mind, I've been thinking about this day, like when I get to teach Amelia how to drive, I've been thinking about this for quite a while. Mm, and I so, have not because I figured you'd teach her. So <laughs> my plan was with the mini, so she started with the minivan. She's going to get to use the Tesla next. But uh, I figured as soon as what happens when you let off the brake, you, you hold the brake down, you put it in drive. And when you let off the brake, what does an automatic car do? It starts moving forward, right? So usually the typical challenge with kids learning is they hit the gas and it's like, whoa, and then they, like, they freak out. So they either hit the gas again or that's where they have to hit the brake. And then when they hit the, br the brake, they don't really know how to apply it. So it's like, whoa, right? It's one of those type of like woof, slingshot type things. So for such a long time, I've been thinking when I teach Amelia, what I wanted her to do is put the car in drive and just let off the brake and then just apply the brake. I don't even want her to move her foot to the gas. Yeah. That makes sense. I just want to keep it focused. I don't know. I didn't watch a YouTube video and I didn't read a book like how to raise girls and uh, drive teach a car. Teach them how to drive. But I was just <laughs> thinking like if I could teach her, how would I teach her this? And so <clears throat> basically that's what happened. She just let off the brake and she started rolling and her eyes got real big and she got real excited. And I was like, all right, now hit the brakes. And then like she kind of hit them a little too hard and that, ah, to be expected. Is so that when I smashed a, my face no, not in the yet. seat? So then okay. we did a couple more times. <laughs> And I said, all right, this time we're going to hit the gas. And I fully expected this to happen. She hits the gas and she's like, whoa, she lit up. It's a minivan. So it's not like she like did anything crazy. She didn't crazy. even go that fast. And all of a sudden she panicked, right? Because this is the do part of like. You got to figure it out. She's like. She's learning she's how to learning drive. She's how to become doing a driver. it. <clears throat> but there's this part to the, in the book that I liked. I mean, getting there. I promise I'm getting there. I know I'm long winded. So all of a sudden. Hits the gas, panics. Ah! What do you think she does? Hits the brakes. Arr! She Arr! smashes my so face. So basically, in the seat. <laughs> like, all because all the kids are like excited. Amelia's driving. We and all were of them just like, in the parking lot. We were at our church. There was nobody there. We were all in the back, just cheering her on. We were like, we're just gonna go do this for ten minutes. So it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know what I said. But I knew it was going to happen. I wish what I would have said was, ah, oh, to be expected. And I just, I think I said, like, that's about as bad as it can ever get. I think that's what I said. So look yeah. it. Let's keep going. It was something like that. Yeah. Because I knew it was going to happen. So by the end of the night, she got up to 15 miles per hour. She did a couple parks. She did a reverse park. And it was a lot of fun. So there's a part of it, though, in there. This yeah. is my last, and then I'm done. Now that you talk for the rest of the time. I'm so sorry. But as you're learning this, it's going to, like, I saw it all over her face. She's, like, freaking out. And I was always checking around. There was nobody in the parking lot. Nobody was there. But as she crossed certain intersections, I said, did you look for lot. oncoming traffic? Did you check? Did you check left, right? Did you look around? Because there's a part of a, an awareness to the things that you're doing. Right. right. You have to be aware of your surroundings. You have to be aware of your circumstances. You have to be aware of your situations. And she just wasn't aware yet. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a part of this while you're going after your dreams, while you're being persistent in your ideas, while you're consistently crushing your kazone.
Hey, yeah. I like that. Consistently crushing your Kazone, triple C. There's an awareness aspect. And sometimes it's okay to pump the brakes, take a step back, to gather the awareness yeah. and to keep moving forward. That's because great. it's in those moments of awareness that you can identify, self-identify, maybe some places where you could be possibly setting yourself up for failure or possibly setting yourself to get tripped up. It's good. And sometimes those trip ups can cause people to stay on the sidelines of life way too long where it's just a small thing. Right. And if we could have caught it beforehand, guess what? We could have stayed, we could have stayed on the path longer. So I don't know. So great. All right. So he says, I'm not going, so then he talks about setting goals, right? So we talk about setting goals all the time on here. He says, I'm not going to stop setting goals no matter what it looks like. He says, some people say this, I set the goal 10 times. We'll set it another 10 times. Yeah. And if that isn't enough, set it another 10 times. He says, I've reached every goal that I've ever set in enough times. Some of you haven't set, in, set them enough. He says, you only compete with yourselves. You're not competing with anybody else. The goal is what drives you. So whatever your goal is for your health and fitness or whatever you, the reason that you're here to watch, he says, if you don't, like, I have set the same goal to be able to do a pull-up <laughs> like four or five years. An unassisted like pull-up. getting in the best shape of my life. And I say, I'm going to do a pull-up, an unassisted pull-up this year. And I still say it, and I still see it. I just have not achieved it without something helping me to do it. But he says, do you quit? Are you going to like, quit you after not? Do these big muscles? I know. Do I, I don't know. It's just. I don't understand. Like, I try every you try day. You do. No, I don't do it. Huh. Maybe it's how you're holding your hands. I don't know. But Listen. If you set a goal and you don't reach it, or you're like, I've had that goal for the last five years and keep setting the goal and keep going after it. Don't, we talked about not quitting yesterday. Yeah, I'll give you, uh, I'll, can I share another story? Yep. This is relevant story. Yeah, all right. yesterday. All right. So we went to Applebee's. It wasn't a date night. I didn't get the Oreo shake, but I did get the Blondie. Yeah. Can you hear the song theme in that? Um, I went about 40 days without eating sugar felt phenomenal felt great getting in the best shape of my life yesterday we went to go watch jurassic park or jurassic yeah, we went world on a whatever date, it was a family date with a whole bunch of other families and then so it was like a afterwards we went friends date so i got the chicken sandwich it was awesome yep. but uh then i looked at stephanie and i said should we get the blondie because it's been a while so we got the blondie and as i'm eating it, i'm like this is good but it's not great Right. Yeah. So this is kind of like resetting your goal. So last night I was thinking to myself, like, did I destroy all my hard work because I ate a blondie skillet? I ate way more of it than she did. She had like two bites. Right. Is that okay? To I, say that? I love that you're saying this because it gives people perspective. Oftentimes they send me a message and I'll get like, Hey, I made a wrong, a wrong, whatever wrong means to you. I didn't make the best choice this morning. Did I wreck my entire day? Did I wreck all of my progress? So does that mean your last 40 days are a waste? No. Right. Because I'm learning to become. Right. Right. So my awareness was, this is a fun night. We all kind of shared it. It was great. Like, did it, was it, what, was it what was best for me? No. But I'm not also beating myself up. Right. And I think this is the first time, honestly, I can say this in my life, where it was like, I was okay eating it, but I actually didn't feel like I had to have it. Yeah. That's and so good. I was sitting about, I was sitting there last night and I'm like, this is like a temporary setback, but it doesn't define who I am. It's not even a setback, but it was a realization of, right. of awareness. And it's like, sometimes you get a, sometimes you put bad gas in a vehicle and it runs a little funky for a little bit. Right. Yep. But honestly, like I'm back here today, I'm feeling great and I'm ready to charge. Yeah. And I honestly, I'm thinking to myself, like I could do another 40 days without eating sugar. Right. You know that? Mm -hmm. Um, so I just wanted to encourage you because I know a lot of you come here for food reasons and that's typically the hang up in people's psychology or their thinking is around food. Right. And so I just wanted to share a story with you all that you can do it. You can achieve, you can overcome the addiction to food. You can overcome the addiction to sugar. The only way you fail is if you quit. That's right. You quit on yourself, right? You use the excuse that it's never going to happen and you just don't go after it. All right, I'm gonna go Keep with, setting the goals. Hold on. Gonna read, I want to read, read one comments. more of this. He's, I love this. He says, success-oriented people believe enough in an, 
in an ideal to hang on until they've made it. So listen to this. It's like planting a tree. When you plant a tree, do you give it three months or three years to grow? Or do you cut it down when you don't see success after three weeks, right? When you plant a tree, you don't go yell at the tree because it's been three weeks and you haven't seen the success. Have you guys ever heard the story of the bamboo tree? Does anybody know the story of the bamboo tree? When we're done, you should just go to YouTube and type in like bamboo tree. I think Les Mills, Les Brown, sorry, Les Mills. That's Les Brown has a really great doing stretching um, thing. Yeah. A, but a bamboo tree is planted and you have to water it and you've got to water it and you've got to, I don't know, all the things you have to do for a bamboo tree and you actually don't see success or any growth. Nothing comes out of the ground because it grows underground where you can't see it. I think it's five years. If you want to watch the bamboo tree, I'll go find it. Just comment bamboo. I'll put it in my stories or today. Or tree is probably easier and to And I'll put spell. it in my stories with a link. But what you do is, so then in a matter of, I can't, I know it's like five years or three years, it grows underground. You Did see you no success. Nope. Okay. And then what happens yeah. is, is in a matter of like, is it like six days? All of a sudden it grows to be huge, like huge, like, your muscles. like 20 feet tall. And so it goes from like, you can't see anything. And then all of a sudden it's as tall as a house. Yeah. But you had to stay consistent for the five years. They had to stay consistent in watering it and taking care of it. Could you do that? I tell people, can you give yourself a year of persistency? What we're talking about in this chapter of doing the best that you can. If you make a choice not to let it wreck everything or not to quit, but keep going, understanding that your body takes time to change and evolve and learn things, that can you give yourself a year so that the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years, you feel great as long as you create a lifestyle out of it. It's powerful. So I'd like to remind you, keep focusing on where you want to go. Keep focusing on where you want to go. A winner always sees more than what he or she is at. They keep going. They never lose focus. Right. But a loser always sees somebody else getting the brakes and stops too soon. Oh. Don't be a loser. Stay You're a in your lane. There's greatness Stop in you because greatness to other people. made you. That's right. what I think. I love that. All right. Until I like I've these. Got, should we read these? You can read ones? those. They're my very strength tiny. lies solely in my tenacity. So, where's your tenacity? Are you, what are you focused on? Commitment to continuity creates continuity. emotional stability. Continuity. Continuity. I said that wrong. Commitment to continuity creates emotional stability. That's a good one. Should okay. I take this? Should I read That's this last one? That's a long one? one. It's a long one. Are you ready for it? Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men and women with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. derelicts? I haven't heard that word in a long time. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Those are a lot of big words in there. Here's That's the deal. That's why that came from Kelvin Coolidge. Don't quit. <laughs> get all of our morning stuff done. We are here to help. You can reach out with any questions that you have. Go to Keto Mom Secrets to watch any of the other books from the book club or continue to tune in here. Um, and then yesterday I have a list of questions. I'm going to come on later today and just do some basic Keto 101. So if you've got any low carb health, any questions, just post any uh, Keto questions below and I'll come on and do that. I've got them written down right down at the end of my table that I was going to come on. Some common questions that I've gotten asked. If you've got a question, ask below and I'll come on later today. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great afternoon or a great whatever time of day it is for you. Anything else? I just like looking at all the people who are watching. Appreciate you all. Thanks Your for presence matters. Thanks for commenting for sure. and we'll see you later. Bye, everybody.